The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the X-Zone comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern on the Talkstar Radio Network, X-Zone Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, And Star Cable and our growing family of broadcast affiliates right across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, Asia, Africa, and Europe. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. Exxon Nation, my first guest of tonight's show is Linda Lee Heck. We're going to be talking to Linda about her new book entitled The Channeling of September 11, 2001. Now, the days following the events of 9-11, Linda experienced something so strange. She felt an overwhelming involuntary urge to pick up a pencil and draw. Linda's images were not formed in her own mind, but by her hand, seemingly guided by an external influence. At first, Linda's images appeared to be demonic in nature, perhaps channeling the evil spirits surrounding the 9-11 attacks. This unpredictable and explainable urge to draw lasted for nine months. It's believed by Linda that her early, more abstract drawings depict man's earthly sins against God's word. Joining me now is Linda Lee. Heck, and Linda, welcome to the X Zone. Well, thank you, Rob. I'm glad to be here. Linda, uh, what was it like when you first picked up that pencil and started drawing, and you basically had no control of what you were drawing? How did that feel? Well, that's that's correct, Rob. What happened to me um, was my husband and myself and a guest mm-hmm. were all sitting and watching the horrific events on the news broadcast, yeah. and. Um, before me lay just a pencil and paper that happened to be there on the on the coffee table, and this urge just started overwhelming me to pick up this paper and pencil. And I kept fighting with my psyche without speaking orally at all and going, why do I want to pick that up? I don't want to write anything. Mm-hmm. And the urge just kept getting stronger and kept getting stronger and kept getting stronger. And um, finally, I gave in to the urge, and I picked it up and started making lines on the paper. And... Um, I was turning the paper with one hand while making lines um, with the other hand, and uh, and then suddenly, I don't know how long that took, uh, all concept of time was gone. I really didn't really think anything about my surroundings mm-hmm. at that time, and then uh, it stopped, and I looked down, and there was this image, and I was rather shocked by the image. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know why I drew, why I drew it. I'd never drawn anything in my life before, um, so I was just left baffled and shocked and my husband walked over and said what were you doing and he looked at it and he Mm -hmm. said thinking what is this and I said I don't know honey I don't know prior to this experience Linda had you had any any psychic impressions that that you're aware of no no maybe good strong Mm -hmm. intuition um as a woman yeah but as far as any other psychic abilities no none at all all right, Linda, please stand by. You and I have to take our first commercial break for this uh, first hour of tonight's show. Exo Nation, Linda Lee Heck is my special guest. Here's the website, www.thechanneling of 
dot com. That's the channeling of nine one one dot com. Linda and I will return on the other side of this two minute commercial break as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget Exxon Nation on September the fifth of this year. We will be releasing our 10th anniversary edition of the X Chronicles newspaper. That is a tribute to 9-11. It's going to be free for everyone around the world at www.xchronicles-newspaper.com forward slash publisher. I'll be back in two minutes. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. We all desire health, happiness, and fulfillment, but often get in our own way. Repeated patterns that leave us out of control can keep us feeling powerless, frustrated, and unable to move forward in spite of our best efforts. Unconscious patterning disconnects us from our gifts, often destroying the very thing we seek. But there is an answer. We can take charge of our destiny and heal the trauma of our history. Shamanism is an effective ancient modality that can reconnect us with our true selves, empower the creation of our dreams, and return us to health and balance. Cody Alexander is a certified shamanic practitioner and teacher with 11 years experience. Email healingpathways33 at gmail.com or visit codyalexander.net to schedule a long-distance shamanic session today. Exonation, as everyone knows, this is the 10th anniversary of that horrific day going back in time to September the 11th, 2001. And I don't believe there is anyone listening to this broadcast around the world who cannot remember where they were and what they were doing when they heard the news about the attacks on America and the attack on the worldwide democratic way of living. The world was under attack. However, they targeted the United States of America. Joining me this hour is Linda Lee Heck, and she is the author of a book that's entitled The Channeling of September 11, 2001. Her website is www.thechanneling911.com. How long did you draw for, Linda? Uh, Well, we began drawing, or I began drawing, I believe it was uh, two days after the event, Mm -hmm. and I continued uh, drawing compulsively for the next maybe four or five months. Um, Then it uh, was a little bit more under my control Mm -hmm. that I could kind of um, hush the urge if it was an inconvenient time for me, but I did continue drawing for about nine months. 
My goodness. What were some of the drawings uh, that you drew? What did they look like? Well, all of those are available. Not all of them, but some of them are available on my website. Mm -hmm. But the very first drawing, um, which was really a very shocking drawing, it kind of depicts an image um, of what one would maybe call a devil. Mm -hmm. It has uh, four horns on its head or three horns and an ear, one or the other. One side of the body has, however, an angelic wing attached to it. Mm. And the other side does not. And in the center of the belly, which I came to learn later, was a sign, um, a five-star sign, uh, with a circle around it for some reason. And we learned later, when I had taken them to um, an artist in town to look at them, that that symbol is a symbol that's commonly used in the Wicca religion. Mm -hmm. It's called a pentacle. Yes. And I guess there's two different ways that a pinnacle, one is with stars uh, two points up, and mm-hmm. the other one's with it three points up. In my case, I believe we have here three points up and two down. And how that kind of falls in, I'm not quite sure, but, um, and it, it has, um, these are just, just rough lines. It has uh, um, a, not a very pretty smile on its face. Its eyes are, are uh, there, but they're not real, real distinct. Distinct. That was the very first one that mm-hmm. I drew, and that was drawn on the 15th of uh, September. How many drawings in total have you done pertaining to 911? We have, I have um, 80, 80, 82, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Now, your, your book is entitled The Channeling of September 11, 2001. Who do you think or who do you believe that you were channeling? Well, you know, the night that, of the event that that happened, I went to bed that night and I said a prayer to my great grandmother, who at that time in my mind was my guardian angel. I have come since to learn that that's not possible, but at that time, and I asked her. Whoa, whoa wait a um, second. Let's go. Let's go back here for a sec. Why is that impossible? Well, generally, a guardian angel is somebody who has never lived in a human body. They're mm-hmm. spirits. Who says they live that? In the spirit world. Who says this is that? Just, this is just different research that I have done, and um, opinions of different people. So that kind of led me to believe that um, she's more of a spirit guide than a guardian angel. A spirit guide is somebody who has lived in a human body, and a guardian angel okay. is somebody that chooses you to watch over you while uh-huh. you're here on Earth, um, awaiting you know for you eventually you'll pass over and hopefully become somebody's guardian spirit so that's where i got the idea but i said the prayer to her that night and um, i asked her if the events of 9-11 was the beginning mm-hmm. of the revelations uh told in um the bible and uh i didn't really think too much more about it after that uh, even when I started drawing, I didn't think about the prayer. It wasn't a long, long, long time after that that I even thought about the prayer that I had lifted up at that time. And um, it was at that time when I started wondering where this ability was coming from, because mm-hmm. I had never drawn anything before, um, that I began to question whether it was coming from a dark or a light force. Now, prior to this automatic handwriting as as it's known had you been interested in the paranormal angels uh was there anything that had happened to you that had triggered this uh this interest um i don't think anything in particular no had happened to me um i had had a couple of experiences where i'm i'm pretty sure it was my guardian angels looking out for me um, that have protected me from harm um, that I believe was coming from them. But outside of that, that was about as far as my imagination. Mm. I had allowed it to stretch at that point. What was your incentive for releasing your 80 pictures in a book? Well, we've carried them around with us, my husband and I, for the last eight and a half, nine years. Mm Mm-hmm. And we had mentioned many times, I couldn't understand, I would look at the artwork and I I would look at it 
Rob, and I would go, my God, I can't believe I've, I've drawn these because mm-hmm. I, I never could draw anything. In fact, when my children were little, I tried to draw a pin the tail on the donkey for my kids, and my daughter said, give up, Mom, let me do it. That's how bad my drawing was. So when I would look at my pictures that I had drawn, I was wondering always, why did I draw them? Who are they for? And where did this talent come from, and why did it leave? So... My husband and I had talked often about the possibility of maybe putting them in a book. And I began to get the feeling that they weren't just for me, they were for others. And uh, shortly after my father died two Mm -hmm. years ago, I took my mother to a medium in the area, hoping that maybe she could get a message from my father. Her caretaker was very, very much involved with that kind of stuff, and she encouraged us to go. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was at that meeting that the woman, Barbara St. John, who was the medium, after after the event was over with, called me to the side and said, Linda, I have a message that you are, you have a job to do. And I just kind of looked at her like, what, what do you mean I have a job to do? And she goes, it has something to do with writing. You need to go ahead and do whatever it is you think you need to do with writing. And I just kind of looked at her and I said, hmm, Okay. So that was kind of my confirmation when I left there. We came home. My husband and I started talking about it again. Mm-hmm. And that night we decided that, yes, this was not just meant for me to be carried around, put in closets wherever we go, not seen by anyone, and we wanted to share it. And I thought, well, if I share this and even one person out there goes through my book and finds any kind of peace or understanding, then it was worth the expense and the time to put it together. Now, now, is this self-published? Yes, it is. Did you try and get it published by a mainstream publisher? No, I didn't. I didn't even go there. Why not? I, I don't know. I think um, um, I felt that the book, because it was a small book, um, that, that probably any mainstream publishers wouldn't. And I was also concerned with the timing because I wanted the book out by the 10th anniversary. I see. Um, what do you think someone would gain from looking at your drawings? Well, first of all, I think my story uh, is an interesting story about how this all came about mm-hmm. and how it all ended. And I think that anybody who is interested in different types of paranormal activity or believes in guardian angels, or believes in um, spirit guides, mm-hmm. or any of those things, would find this interesting. And they might might want to help me solve my own question, uh, which is left at the end of the book, for them to decide from the south, themselves, after reading my story and looking at my drawings, whether this was um, a guided thing, uh, spirit guided, uh, how I came about doing this. Um, I believe in my heart that most likely I was channeling, I was channeling some spirit um, that had a story to tell, mm-hmm. and they told them in my drawings. Don't you, uh, Do you think that some people may look at your book and say, all right, this is just another way for somebody to make a fast couple of bucks come the, come the anniversary <laughs> of 9-11? Well, I think that uh, that could be true because there are a lot of people out there that think and feel that way. Mm-hmm. My book is being um, the... Uh, two proceeds, uh, Wounded Warriors is going to .org, um, and Tuesday's Children were two of the charities that we choose to receive income from our book um, because they were both established after the 9-11 events, and they helped the, um, the beneficiaries of those that were lost in the attacks on 9-11. So we've, we've uh, contributed $1 to each um, charity um, with each copy that sold, which just leaves me enough money to really um, cover the cost of printing the books. Now, so that's, now that's I, not now, my goal. All right, now I understand uh, that you started writing the, the pictures on the 15th of uh, September? Yes, the first picture was drawn. Okay. And, when, and when did it stop? What date did it stop? I believe uh, the last one I had drawn was in the month of March. All right, stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exxon Nation, Linda Lee Heck is our guest. www.thechanneling911.com. That's www.thechanneling911.com. 
the channeling of 911.com. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and Star Cable. 1 800 610 7035 worldwide. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com on MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com, and our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. As you know by now, the Exxon radio and TV show, let me see, the X Chronicles newspaper, Relmar McConnell Media Company, is fully supporting and backing Bill Cosby as a write-in candidate for president <laughs> in 2012. Now, uh, this is from the office of Bill Cosby, and he says, I have decided to become a write-in candidate for president in the year 2012. Here is my platform. Number one. Any use of the phrase press one for English is immediately banned. English is the official language. Speak it or wait outside our borders until you can. Number two, we will immediately go into a two-year isolationist attitude in order to straighten out the greedy, big business posture in this country. America and Canada will allow no imports and will do no exports. We will use the Walmart policy. If we ain't got it, You don't need it. We'll make it here and sell it here. Number three, when imports are allowed, there will be a 100% tax on it coming in here. Number four, all retired military personnel will be required to man one of the many observation towers located on the southern border of the United States and the northern border with Canada on six months' tours. They will be under strict orders not to fire on southbound or northbound aliens. Number five, security, uh, Social Security will immediately return to its original state. If you put nothing in, you get nothing out. Neither the president nor the politicians will be able to touch it. Number six, welfare checks. 
will be handed out on Fridays at the end of a 40-hour school week after successful completion of a urine analysis test for drugs and passing grades. Number seven, professional athlete steroids. The first time you check positive, you're banned from sports for life. Number eight, crime. We will adopt the Turkish method, for example. The first time you steal, you lose your right hand. There are more life sentences. There are no more life sentences, I should say. If convicted of murder, you will be put to death by the same method you chose for the victim you killed. Uh, Gun, knife, strangulation, etc. Number nine, one uh, one export of ours will be allowed. That's wheat. Because people around the world need to eat. However, a bushel of wheat will be the exact price of a barrel of oil. Number 10. Allow foreign aid using American and Canadian taxpayer money will immediately cease and the money saved will help pay off the national debt and ultimately lower taxes. When disaster occurs around the world, we'll ask the people if they want to donate to a disaster fund and each citizen can make the decision as to whether or not it's a worthy cause. Number 11, the Pledge of Allegiance and Lord's Prayer will be said every day at school and every day in Congress and in both House of Commons and Senate of Canada. Number 12, the National Anthem will be played at appropriate ceremonies, sporting events, outings, etc. Attendees will be invited to take off their hats while the National Anthem is being played and or sung. My apology if I've offended or stepped on anybody's toes, nevertheless... God bless the USA. God bless Canada. Sincerely, Bill Cosby, Presidential Candidate 2012. 1-800-610-7035 is worldwide toll-free. And if you'd like to visit that website where we have it posted and take the X-Zone Radio TV show, X-Chronicles Presidential Poll, you can go to www.xzonenews.com forward slash Cosby for President 1 dot htm. And as it stands right now, Bill Cosby is in the lead with 94,176 votes. Barack Obama has 138. Jimmy McMillan has no votes. Tom Miller has one. Roy Moore has one. Michelle Bachman has no votes. Ron Paul has four. Newt Gingrich has 23. Mitt Romney has three. And listen to this. The runner-up after Bill Cosby is Alfred E. Newman from Mad Magazine. (laughs) I can't believe it, with 1,976 votes. Once again, that's xzonenews.com forward slash Bill Cosby, uh, Cosby for President, 1.htm. There you go, the voice of the people. I think he makes a lot of sense, and uh, unfortunately, that's why I think he'll never become president, because he makes too much sense. Seems that as long as you make no sense and you keep your head in the sand with your butt up in the air, you can become a politician these days. My Lord, I'm looking at the stock market and the Dow Jones is down 326.35 points. Double digit recession. Here we come. Our guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is Linda Lee Heck, and uh, she is the author of The Channeling of 911. Her website is thechanneling911.com. Uh, L- Linda, uh, we we talked a little bit about guardian angels, and, and when did you first believe or come to believe that guardian angels are really there? That they're just not a figment of people's imagination. They're not just a myth or a folklore, but they really do interact with people's lives. Well, I think um, I really came to that realization a little bit later in life. I was driving on 75 in uh, Florida, Mm -hmm. and um, I was in the far left-hand lane. Everybody was traveling about 80 miles an hour, and all of a sudden I heard somebody scream at me, back off, back off. And it was just loud, and it was vivid, and so I let my foot off of the gas, and backed off, and within seconds, I had to swerve into the medium while I watched the cars before me pile up. And that was my final confirmation that, yes, there's somebody out there watching out for us. And um, I also had another incident earlier in life where I didn't listen to my guardian angel, and one of my children got hurt because I didn't follow that guardian angel saying, 
to me that I need to go check on them, and I didn't do it at the time. I should have done it, and my son ended up getting hurt. So two very, very vivid incidents in my life that has convinced me that somebody there between the veil between this life and past life, somebody is there watching over us. Have you had the urge to draw since you stopped drawing the 9-11 Towers? Have you continued drawing or painting? Have you taken up art as a hobby, as a way to express yourself? And, and is is your book to help others, or was it some sort of therapy for you? Um, you know, Rob, a lot of people think that it was therapy for me. I don't feel that it was. What happened to me was you take a person who had no drawing ability whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I had had some ability and I started doing this, it would make that kind of sense, that it was for my own self um, to understand the events. But I had no drawing ability. Um, In fact, during the period of time that this was going on, my husband, who has always encouraged me in anything that I've chosen to do, um, suggested that I go take some art classes. So I thought, well, okay. Mm -hmm. So I went to the art classes, and every assignment that I was given, I could not accomplish. And um, I mean, even drawing um, an ice cream cone showing, you know, the the depth, uh, like a 3D uh, image of it. I, I, I was unsuccessful, very, very unsuccessful. And when I stopped drawing, I stopped drawing because I I wasn't sure where it was coming from, and I just started fighting the urge. I went back about 8 to 12 weeks later, um, picked up paper and pencil, and tried to draw, and I was back to myself again with no ability to draw, even the simplest of things. And to this day, that is still the fact. Every once in a while, I, I, I do pick up a pencil and paper and think, well, let's try. Let's just see if this comes back. And nothing has happened. So I'm back to the normal state that I was prior to this. So because of the way it happened, never having an ability, never taking any art classes, Mm -hmm. um, never even having a desire to paint or draw or anything like that, really left us wondering where this was coming from. I've I've gone to your website, and and I've checked... You know, checked it out, and uh, when I've gone to your blog, I, I see that you're you're making a strong connection between uh, optical illusions of what some people believe to be a demonic face in the smoke on the burning tower. And uh, you know, I, I've gone over the footage time and time again, and I, I often wonder why people want to add a demonic aspect in there when we know exactly what really happened. Well, I think because of the image that Mark Phillip captured with his camera, which is noted in my book, mm-hmm. he's a, free, a freelance photographer who happened to live just a few buildings from there. And when it was brought to attention what was going on, he went to the top of his building and took those pictures, uh, that particular picture that's in the book. And... I had drawn the picture um, that relates to his picture without seeing his. I found his on the Internet sometime Mm -hmm. later on when I was searching the Internet. And when that picture came out, I was shocked. I went back to my picture that I had drawn while riding in the car with my husband, and I had drawn this picture, and... um, In fact, I had the picture out in the garage. I didn't even want it in the house with me because I didn't like it. I had been leaving it in the garage. So I went to get the picture and brought it in and looked at his picture. So um, then, as I've mentioned in the book, I don't know if I subliminally picked that up while watching the events, that I I really did see that picture in the smoke, even though it hadn't been pointed out to any of us. Um, And that's why I drew it. Or if it was coming and it was being channeled through me as a message that this is whatever's going on is not good. Um, however, the connection is made, I, I'm really not sure even to this day how the connection made. Only that my drawing was so so similar to his picture that was captured of this image in the smoke. 
Now, is is, the, is that the image that you have on the front cover of your book? That's the one that I drew, yes. And that's the one you believe uh, is similar to him, his his uh, photograph? Yes. I can't see a comparison. Uh, to us, we can. They, they look very much alike. There, there are a few lines in them that are different, but they were so close that I found it shocking. Now, and that's the image that you have uh, on the front of your book yeah and also in the in the say the, the page facing his his picture mm-hmm. in the book that I got permission to use in my book from him um, on the opposite page is the picture that I drew so that uh, the, the picture actually shows twice the one on the front cover and the one mm-hmm. inside the book so that they could see the similarity with them facing one you another. You know, I, I've, I've got to be honest with you. Like I said, I'm looking at both of them here on a split screen, and I cannot see a similarity. Oh, um, well, you know, everybody is, it per, is, it, is, it, is it perception? Is it the will and the desire to see something in a photo that some people see it when other people look at it objectively and they see nothing? I believe that could be very true. I'll give you an example of that. Um, while in Alaska... My husband took a picture of a dredge in Alaska. When we got the picture back, I could see um, an image, which mm-hmm. I will say was a ghost on top of the dredge, okay. and had shown the picture to many, many people. And some people saw it, and some people couldn't see it. Hmm. So that would be a good example of that. Now, now, prior to to this this event uh, and your drawing, had you gone to see psychics, mediums, clairvoyants before, or was this something that just happened after this event? Um, actually, I have to admit, yes, I had gone to have um, my palm read in New Jersey on the boardwalk, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was many, many, many years ago. All right, but you but you you didn't have a fascination with the uh, with the unknown, so to speak. Correct. What changed your mind? Um, well, I think a lot of that changed my mind is, is just going through this experience and wondering where it came from and why, why it happened to me. And it made me start doing research, and, you know, I took some of my drawings, and, mm-hmm. I, and I tried uh, desperately to find um, some way to explain them. And... Um, since then, my mind has been open, my eyes have been open, and that there's a lot that goes on that uh, um, I believe is paranormal. Um, I've also, since since all this has happened to me, I often watch the ghost stories on TV and paranormal activity, because yeah. it, has, it has piqued my interest, and I do believe that a lot goes on out there that we do not have control of as far as the paranormal activity goes. All right, stand by. You and I have to take our final break. We'll be back after some fine words from our sponsors. Exo Nation, Linda Lee Heck is our guest. She's the author of The Channeling of 911. Website, www.thechanneling911.com. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this commercial break. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com.
True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A Soul Balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Oh, Exo Nation, how did you know I was going to play that song as we were winding up that uh, segment uh, with Linda Lee Heck? Craig wrote on a piece of paper, another one bites the dust, and he put it on the on the window that uh, separates us. And he was so right. I'm sorry. It just got a little bit way too strange. I went to the website. I looked at the pictures. I saw no comparison whatsoever. And why is it that people have to implicate evil into some disaster, some catastrophe, some horrific event that is caused by human beings that has nothing whatsoever to do with evil. Why did it take this lady nine years to publish her book? If she felt so strong about it, if there was such a strong connection to these drawings, and she really did want to help these two charities, which I think is that, uh, you know, it's a great thing to do. Why did it take nine years when she actually could have been helping them along the road. I get very suspicious when things like this happen. Very suspicious. And, I, and I've got to tell you something, Exo Nation, that I, I just really don't believe everything that people try to feed me doing this job. And I'm not afraid to question. I'm not afraid to challenge. I'm not afraid to say, you know... Basically, uh, what are you talking about? Why did why didn't you do this? Why did you do that? For example, for example, another thing, Exonation, is that there was no connection with the paranormal. All of a sudden, this book comes out, automatic writing, which could have been doodling. Gosh, kids doodle all the time, and um, you know, it it seems that this is an opportunity to make money. And I really can't promote that. I don't buy it. I looked at the pictures. I didn't see any resemblance. And for somebody to sit and tell me that, you know, there's a resemblance or that she saw a picture that was taken by somebody else and she saw a ghost. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask her if she had shown these pictures to a professional mental counselor to see what the psychologist would have said. But Craig in his ultimate wisdom said, end the interview. So Craig, thank you very much, buddy. As always, you're my safety factor. And uh, Craig, what are you drawing over there anyway? Uh Uh-huh. You're doing some automatic writing, are you? Well, no, doesn't look like a devil. No, doesn't have four horns. No. Craig, you're not going to get a book out in time, so just give it a break, pal. Let's just do what we do. Investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. There is the truth out there, Exo Nation. And I believe it is out there. And it's only by weeding out those who have ulterior motives will we find the truth. However, when it comes to this book, I don't think you're going to find the truth, Exo Nation. Check it out yourself, www.thechanneling911.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break. Don't go away. <laughs> 